Good evening, class. This is our uh, second to the last lecture for this uh, course. Um, this will be uh, a more uh, easier and uh, shorter than uh, uh, the lecture that we had before. And uh, also, this will be more interesting, I would say, because of uh, the experiential, uh, say, examples that we can probably see around us in the aspect of uh, appreciation or appreciating uh, agribusiness management in its various forms. So uh, this uh, particular lecture connects with the previous lecture that we have on marketing and this one is uh, uh, dealing with processing sector or we call it the agro processing sector so that uh, this lecture will cover the uh, the uh, fundamental concept of what we exactly mean by processing and also we will be able to distinguish the various uh, stages or levels of processing and uh, the, its uh, importance or the role of uh, processing or agro-processing in the entire agribusiness system. Okay, so, the, so this one, this uh, particular lecture will uh, uh, allow us to see and appreciate also the issues and uh, challenges in the Philippine agribusiness with respect to processing sector or the agro industries or agro processing subsystems. Now, in when we talk about processing, we actually uh, mean, a, according to James Austin in 1981, is an enterprise that process or processes agricultural raw materials, including ground and tree crops as well as livestock. So in other words, when we talk about processing in agribusiness or agro-industries, we actually mean those manufacturing operation that uses agricultural raw materials or agriculturally or ag agricultural products as raw materials for the processing of various uh, uh, final products. It could be crops, it could be livestock. So uh, pro processing sector or processing subsystem refers to those manufacturing operation that uses raw materials from agriculture. Okay, now there are manufacturing operation that do not uh, use agri um, raw materials in the in, in their operation coming from agriculture. Now these are, th this is not the one that we are referring to. Okay, so the processing sector in agribusiness. Now we'll first we talk about the levels of processing. When we talk about processing, uh, more, more often than not, we always refer to those activities involved in the manufacturing operation. I would like to emphasize this time that that is not entirely correct. Because when we say processing, it involves changing the form, changing the characteristics, and changing the appearance of the particular product. Even if you just have to clean it from its raw, say, uh, uh, form, even if you just brush off the mud or maybe clean it, maybe clean with water, that's already part of processing. Actually, why? Because it involves labor already to do that. So you are actually processing, preparing the product for, for a more value addition in the market. Okay, so that, that means right now or starting this time, we would like to address on the clarity of the term processing. Now in processing, there, according to uh, uh, James Austin, processing involves four levels, okay? Now, level one, for example, is actually processing activities involving only cleaning, sorting, and grading, okay? No? Cleaning, sorting, and, and grading. Now this involves, or this includes fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, eggs, or 
maybe uh, fresh tuber crops. As long as it only involves cleaning, sorting, and grading, that's processing already, level one. Now, in level two, no, in level two processing, we also have uh, an example of this is you have cereal grains, meat, spices, animal feeds, jute, air or cotton, abaca, lumber, and rubber. Okay. Now, what are the activities involved in genie, in uh, level two? Now, one is genie for fiber crops. And then you have stripping, cutting, deboning, mixing. So, in other words, you are not, there is no, there is no cooking yet. There is no chemical transformation, but further, uh, say, transformation involved in really making the products more usable to the final stage or the, the next stage of like uh, uh, next stage of operation. So cutting, if you cut fruits and vegetables and wrap it with uh, like uh, a cling wrap with styrofoam, that's processing already. No? That's processing level to alam, no? And then you debone of a, for example, milk fish, or maybe debone a uh, uh, other kind of fish, and to facilitate what is uh, going to be demanded in the market, that's processing already. The purpose of processing is to put more value to your product because it becomes a little bit more expensive already from its raw, raw uh, state. Now, level three now involves uh, like heating and cooking, pasteurization, canning, dehydration, freezing, weeding, okay, and then extraction or maybe assembly, for example. No, so in other words, there is already it already involves a little bit of like uh, uh, changing the appearance by cooking and heating something like that, that or in uh, putting it into a, a, free, a frozen condition okay to what's the purpose in order to improve the shelf life and reach more customers in the market and of course giving more value addition to the product these are these products are for example dairy products fruits and vegetables meats and then you have sauces textiles garment oils furniture sugar and beverages no so this, these are the types of products that are, for example, uh, involving like uh, what, like uh, level three processing. As long as there is, uh, you, you introduce high temperature or low temperature, or maybe you ex extract the juice from it, that's processing already. And down the line, the, the highest and the more uh, stable kind of processing is, there is already chemical transformation. Like you convert a certain, uh, like for example, root crop into instant foods. Like you, you vacuum freeze dry the, the fruit so that it will be lighter and more bulk to be it, that you can transport. Maybe you texturize the vegetable so that it appears like meat, but actually it is uh, PVP or texturized vegetable protein. Or uh, things like you are actually transforming chemically the appearance and the nature of the product and develop a totally new product okay you convert for example a uh, from sweet potato roots to sweet potato vitamin a capsules okay so that's already chemical trans alteration or transformation that is uh, the fourth level of processing beyond that I don't think it's still it's it's still part of the processing that we are talking. No? So it it is already chemically transformed, and then it, it does not anymore like uh, 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 appear to be coming from agriculture. Like for example, if, if you have uh, alcohol from as a final product from cassava chips processing, so that's alcohol. That's chemical transformation already. Now, when you use alcohol for further processing, it's no longer agribusiness. It's purely manufacturing, no, no longer agribusiness because it does not anymore possess the characteristic and nature of an agricultural product. Okay, so that is processing. Remember that, no? From James Austin's definition. 
Now, there are eight major characteristics or categories of agro-industries or agro-processing. Eight major characteristics. One is food manufacturing. Another one is leather and leather products. Okay. You have also beverage industry. You have also tobacco manufacturing or manufacturers. You also have rubber and rubber products. And then you have textile manufacturing. And then you have paper and paper products. And also you have... Uh, fiber products. So these are the uh, eight major categories of agro-processing or agro-industries. Okay. Now, from that list of eight different categories of agro-processing, we slice one very important uh, category there, which is food processing category, no? Food processing. Now, this food processing also has several sub, uh, uh, like, for example, categories. One is processed meat, canned, preserved meats, ham, bacon, and also hamburgers and others. No, you also have milk and dairy products. Okay, you also have processed fruits and vegetables. You also have processed fish. Okay, and then bakery products and of course beverage, beverages, chocolate, and also uh, other kinds of beverage. No, cocoa or you have coffee, and then you have condiments and flavoring extracts. Condiments is a big business in, in agribusiness, no? You have, uh, uh, according to Mr. Campos, the owner of Universal Foods, his business starts by looking at the typical plate of a Filipino diet. What is in a typical plate? You have sausawan, you have, uh, 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 say, for example, uh, other types of condiments, sausawan, uh, say, uh, you have these uh, flavorings, etc., so this are this is this now becomes this has now become a huge business in the Philippine agribusiness. The number eight is cereals also, cereal products. So these are the different types of uh, food processing uh, subcategories. Okay, now what is the importance of processing? Why why is it why is processing so significant in the agribusiness system? Now it's very important because. Agricultural product increase value through agro industries. In other words, agro processing is the vehicle for providing more value addition to agricultural products. From raw, from raw state to process state, there is a huge potential for increasing value in of, of value uh, increasing value addition for any particular agricultural products. Another importance is. Agro-industries agro strengthens the agricultural base of the country or of the agribusiness system. Development of industrial sector relies heavily on developed production or agro-industrial sector. In other words, this is the what? Well, this is the sector or subsystem that stimulates the demand, stimulates the demand of, of the production subsystem. Okay. If your agro industries is active and dynamic, it will stimulate also the demand at the ag uh, agricultural production subsystem. Okay, so that means uh, you cannot process something if raw materials are not available. That means if there are if there is a demand for that particular raw materials, it will be produced by the agricultural output subsystem. Then it will supply the needs of agro processing so that's the connection <coughs> between uh, agro industries or agro processing and uh, production sub system another importance in, <coughs> in this uh, particular sub system is that process products accounts for larger percentage of exports <coughs> as compared to fresh fresh one the country the country's top 25 agricultural exports 25 agricultural exports you see 20 are processed products okay from 25 winning or top agricultural exports of the philippines in the philippines 20 are processed products can you imagine the role more <coughs> more <coughs> it's increased it has a put high potential for increasing value addition in the agribusiness system no then another importance of the agro processing is that Agro-industries have been contributing more than 50% of the total manufacturing 
uh, sectors gross value added no? gross value addition <coughs> what is gross value addition by the way no what do you mean by gross value added in the manufacturing sector when you compute when you are asked to compute compute the gross value addition what is that in the manufacturing sector it's simply total investment in manufacturing sector minus the total revenue or total revenue in the in the manufacturing sector minus total investment in the manufacturing sector the remainder is a gross value added pareho ra nag compute ka of gross margin sa imong uh, like business or manufacturing operation okay or maybe enterprise you compute the gross margin you have sales minus cost of goods sold or cost of goods available for sale then you deduct that what remains is a gross margin what's gross margin uh, that's now the level of profit in a way where you deduct your marketing and other types of associated costs net profit but at least that can already give you an idea in terms of the capability or the capacity of the uh, like uh, investment in agri, agri, agri business is trying to translate into something that is already uh, gaining uh, momentum or economic momentum or economic uh, uh, benefits okay number five sectoral importance of agro processing is that uh, manufacturing sector or agro is a major part of employment or employees no in in terms of labor force 10.1 percent of the total labor force coming from the manufacturing sector particularly agro industries so economically is contributing a lot in the in the economy no now another one is another say sectoral benefit is that the levels of tra transformation being passed by raw agricultural products in the course of processing adds value to the product by increasing take note of this agro processing increases product storability palatability transportability and nutritive value okay so that means to say it has some benefits it can increase the shelf life it can improve the taste it can also uh, uh, improve the capacity or the its its uh, nature in terms of uh, ease in transporting okay and also it preserves and add more nutritive elements for uh, availability or easy assimilation by the, the customers in terms of like providing nutritional benefits okay so that the not the nutritional, uh, for example, elements available, it's already an assimilable form. Unlike katong raw pagit siya, na medyo tas-taas pag ito, uh, breakdown in whatever molecules inside the stomach na mahimong um, ma-absorb yun ang nutrient niya ito. Kaning pag-process sa, ano, sa product into chemically transformed nature, highly assimilable na ang nutrient. Kaon mo, diretso na, nanay nutrient dahil mo, and that is a benefit. And of course, it cannot reach that particular form without adding more value, okay? So it's relatively uh, expensive and more stable, okay? So that is uh, very important in terms of engaging in processing activity, okay? Now, the processing subsystem or processing sector is the transformative activity in the agribusiness system. Okay? It is the transformative. It converts from liquid to whatever, powder, from powder to, I mean, from, from solid to maybe liquid or something like that through certain procedure or uh, steps in the processing operation. Now it can transform a certain product and make it more uh, stable and make it more available to customers. It provides competitive advantage to raw and undifferentiated agricultural products. That's why if you have a processed product, 
it's already a highly differentiable form. What is that? Highly differentiable, meaning to say it can already be differentiated in the eyes of the customer. Why? Because it goes there, it, it accompanies branding already. This kind of product is manufactured by this company and that company and that kind of such and so. So there is already a differentiation in there. If, for example, if your product goes into the mailing operation of Del Monte, it bears now the brand of Del Monte. And that is already a premium in the market and several other company that maybe uh, would uh, manufacture that particular product also. In which case, the raw material would be coming from your farm. No? Now, these are some of the examples of like processing products or processed products. You have here a product with improved palatability. It's more, uh, uh, it's more it, it has a longer shelf life and it is also transportable. You can see the cans and boxes. And it's, it's a better alternative for really any particular use. Because when you, when you bring products that are raw, it's already uh, I mean, uh, susceptible to spoilage and, spoilage and uh, say, for example, slippage or something like that. No? So these are some of the, you, know, you have cans, uh, packed in retortable plastics, boxes, and, and, and so on. No? Another is you have agro-processing also improves or also provides conditioning of the product. Conditioning for really customers' uh, uh, specification. What are some of the conditioning, what? Condition, conditioning activities or operations? That this involves cleaning, sorting, grading, drying, and cutting. Okay, because when you sort, for example, egg, you can farm, and then you sort that into small, medium, large, or jumbo, it facilitates more convenience, convenience to customers, and it also commands more value addition because the price difference now will be very clear. Small against large, there's a difference in price. No? How much per tray of that particular egg or whatever. No? So drying, cutting. No? So but these are some of the conditioning operation. Another you have, you can see from, from this picture that uh, uh, fruits are packed in styrofoam uh, boxes with cling wrap around them and it's already becoming more hygienic and also appealing to the customers. No? So not only agro-processing provides conditioning, but it also provides stabilizing, stab stabilized, no? stable and among product. In what way? You have uh, aggregation, cooling, freezing, or freeze drying, or maybe curing, fermentation, and drying, and vacuum uh, frying, for example. It stabilizes the, the product and it's more, it's, it's, it's more uh, storable and of course it has a longer shelf life. And it also stabilizes the, the uh, say for example, nutritive content and the taste, for example. If you have, if you have, uh, if you, if you have, for example, managed to uh, like, uh, uh, if you have, Tasted, for example, a vacuum freeze dried, no? freeze drying. Instead of heating, you dry it by freezing. No? So, extract from water and ania. If you have tasted a vacuum freeze dried, na, for example, durian, uh, the vacuum freeze dried durian, the, the cubes of that particular vacuum freeze dried durian will stick to your tongue. And once it absorbs moisture, it tastes the same as a fresh durian. Can you imagine that? It's dried, but once it absorbs moisture from your mouth, it tastes just like any other fre fresh durian. And that is very, uh, I don't know, very stable. And the taste, the nutritive co content still remains. It's also expensive. Okay, It's also expensive. It's transportable because it is light in weight and you can bring so many a, a lot of them and transport to several destinations and locations fermentation also it functions as stabilizing the uh, no, yogurt for example a a drinkable form yogurt that
that's a product of fermentation. When you can drink a well-fermented yogurt, boy, you can really uh, taste, you can still taste the milk and, of course, the creamy part really be giving more uh, aroma and also giving more flavor and nutrient to your to the customers, okay? Of course, vacuum freeze drying, vacuum frying, and etc. No, so these are what these are. Uh, th these are products that are uh, being made stable in the market. You can see at various uh, supermarket there is what we call as uh, vacuum sealed. It's frozen, but it's also vacuum sealed. So it's vacuum sealed. Gaano siya, very light. And then when you open open the the, the, the packaging it retains the freshness actually you know? retains the freshness and the taste so this is the natural way of like drying you can see this uh, in in many provinces but still it's part of conditioning okay now not only that it is stabilizing conditioning but it all processing technology also uh, really provides a way by which it can reach to distant markets now we have here what are some of the basic factors in processing okay there are various factors in processing one is the kind of processing technology that that, that is available technology use should meet technology used for processing should meet the preferences of the market okay if the market says it should be aseptic it should be aseptic meaning to say no microbial contamination if the process is said it should be it should comply with uh, for example a HACCP uh, requirement or a standard that is hazard analysis critical control point uh, compliant then you have to adapt that uh, certain quality audit okay or standard so processing technology very importantly uh, is driving also the processing uh, processing uh, subsector or subsystem okay not only processing technology but also the the processing te technology connects with the cost of technology and the labor and energy requirement also okay that's why we cannot adapt to certain technology because as of the moment with respect to our economy it's still expensive and it might disrupt the the product price in the market so that is also one drawback there now again processing technology you have one thing to consider is the capacity utilization of the equipment availability of skills cost of manpower cost of manpower training because if you have a new technology you have to train people how to use it but if people are not trainable are really lacking the the you know the 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 kind of training or the, the level of literacy required to to understand the technology it's going to be costly to train people that's why uh, mag labor intensive na lang, dilit na lang mag, uh, capital intensive intensive so that's why you have also capacity utilization if because when you go into processing we always assume that you have a huge market in other words why because economic economic economies of scale is very important because you will be investing on a lot of capital asset capital uh, resources now these capital resources are expensive and the 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 amount of which cannot be recovered in one production cycle but a stream of periods before it can be recovered that's why we have to have uh, the, the the required or the the appropriate economies of scale operation so that we'll be able to recover our investment when we do processing okay so these are the the pictures inside the factory even if it is only uh, dressing uh, turkey but you can see how it is done in the in the factory operation that one sorting and uh, putting the eggs in trays so mechanized already no breakage because it's already uh, handled properly using machines. No? That one also, bottling and canning. No? So these are the different uh, setup in the factory. No? And then 
Another basic requirement, not basic requirements in processing, not only processing technology, but we also consider in processing the plant location, okay? The plant location, whether the location of our plant, processing plant, is close to raw material source, okay? Close to the market, not very expensive, and really, you know, and distributing the products. The cost involved in moving the raw materials from unfinished products outside of the factory. You will notice that in the in the input industry, like feeds, you will notice that so many of the feed mills in the Philippines are located either in Batangas or in Cagayan de Oro. In Cagayan de Oro, there are 13 feed mills there. In Batangas, something like that number also is operating in Batangas. Why do you think they are, uh, they are congregating there? Very simple reason, available, the location is close to source of raw materials. And of course, access and efficiency in transport. Cagayan de Oro, very close to Bukidnon, the source of like uh, yellow corn, and also close to other type of inputs there, or raw materials. And the transportation by, by sh in shipping the finished product from Cagayan de Oro to Manila or to other major cities of the Philippines is very efficient also. <laughs> That's why they are located there, okay? So it should reach the source of raw materials in, in uh, an acceptable length of time, okay? Just like this one. Like, uh, haven't you, uh, aren't you surprised or aren't, have, you, have you asked yourself why, for example, for example, in Cebu, huh? in Cebu, general milling and also there is Asian grains uh, uh, manufacturing operation, Asian grains, <coughs> all these huge are uh, like manufacturing operation or processing operation, feeds and also <coughs> food <coughs> manufactured by general milling. Why are they? Why are they uh, along the coastline? In fact, just beside the port is the processing operation of general milling in Cebu. And of course, Asian grains also in Naga, it's also close to the, to the port. Very simple reason is in transport. <coughs> when the raw materials arrive from, from, uh, from other countries, the ship will just dock directly from the from the port and siphon all raw materials inside the silos of the uh, uh, manufacturer manufacturing operation, and it in no time it's going to be used by the factory. Huh? So that's uh, kind of obvious uh, reason. You have here uh, packing operation in a factory, and you see very close to the uh, tracking also activity <coughs> another <coughs> factors considered in processing operation not only uh, processing technology not only plant operation but plant location are the factors nearness to raw materials proximity to the market and transport uh, factors you also have adequate uh, labor supply acceptable infra infrastructure and effects of development in the location also. Yeah, this, these are these are uh, no, these are uh, factors that would dictate. If you, for example, if your operation will emit foul odor in the in the atmosphere, you should not be near to populated areas. You should be a distant away so that you will not uh, pollute the air around uh, populated areas. That's one thing also effects of the development in the location, okay? And then another factor in, uh, in uh, processing technology, processing uh, investment is you have inventory management, okay? If it is close to some source of raw materials, you have considered also seasonality of raw materials and proper and adequate physical facilities. Source of power, for example, source of, uh, uh, other 
utility source of water okay and then you also have uh, if, if the raw materials are perishable you have to be close to the, to the source also no? so that is for proper inventory uh, management no? and then also uh, sufficient working capital for processing activities during peak and slack season okay just like this one no inventory in means in uh, the the freezer inside the, the factory warehouse okay that's why talking about logistics this is a very important factor in uh, no, inventory management because you need to uh, be uh, you need to be close to the market or close to the raw material source so that the requirements of product stability is really being uh, considered with utmost importance, especially if that is the, the very important factor for product acceptability. Just like, for example, COVID-19 vaccine, okay? The COVID-19 vaccine has a specific temperature requirement. That means to say logistics very important in a way that it should not prohibit or it should not compromise the temperature temperature requirement of the vaccine it reaches the intended customer at the, as a stable as as much as possible as at the at its most stable like for example for math or corn no and then have efficiency efficiency effective effective efficacy as expected of that particular product no so the other thing the other uh, factor for processing uh, uh, investment or processing activities is not only inventory management but packaging and other inputs you know packaging is very important no why because packaging protects product quality it facilitates product transportability even the packaging itself will already advertise the product if you see products with is well well packaged will be attracted to buy your product it enhances product identity and of course it adds value through differentiation okay it adds value to differentiation now if it is if packaging and other inputs are uh, also one of the very important factors in your product performance then you have to strongly consider like uh, getting a more stable access to packaging raw material packaging materials just like this one these are bottles and uh, bottles and made of glass or plastic okay depending on the requirements of the product now glass is more stable and more dainty more uh, uh, appealing to the customer only that it is heavy to transport no? plastic well it can be used once but uh, also very light that but is very light to transport okay now these are packaging materials if it is available that can create a lot of uh, what a create a lot of uh, advantage in the market also okay these are retortable or stand-up pouches for product packaging very important because uh, in, in, instead of using tin cans you will use this in order to really still uh, achieve the desired uh, performance of your product in terms of uh, uh, storability and other considerations. Just like, for example, this is a stand-up pouch with with a what with a uh, uh, like, for example, the the squirtable plastic. You can squirt that, and you can get the uh, the material inside a particular container. You also have a flip top packaging. Okay. You can uh, that's why you you flip the top cover and you get the the product very convenient and of course the the packaging material is made of paper so it's not harming the environment but at least it can also preserve the content inside no? and then you have tin cans also tin cans are very hygienic type or, or solid materials for packaging but boy tin cans are actually expensive nowadays because tin actually is a material which we do not produce in the philippines we buy it from 
uh, countries that has almost like a monopoly of producing things for cans and, and other things. No? So in, in sardines manufacturing, this is a critical, say for example, material for, for processing because it accounts for almost more than 30% of the cost of like sardines actually coming from and uh, tins, no? Kanang lata pa lang. No? Wala ay, ano pa, wala pa sulod. Another 30% is the sauce, especially kanang tomato sauce. We have, we don't have tomato sauce in the Philippines. Although we might, uh, we might think that, oh, we are throwing a lot of tomatoes. Yes, we are throwing a lot of tomatoes. But even if we use that, the production cost is very high, expensive na daan pag sulod sa factory. Matalo ta, tatalunin tayo ng Pakistan. Pakistan is producing tomatoes, even tomato paste. They're producing tomatoes below 10 pesos per kilo. Now, we are actually uh, hovering between 15 to 22 pesos per kilo. That's why we, we cannot use our own tomatoes. No? But in Pakistan and, <coughs> and other countries around it, they produce tomatoes in so cheap uh, production cost. And that's why uh, very important packaging materials that is uh, also uh, managed well by in a, in a processing technology uh, systems. Also this one, they also use this as their packaging material. Before they use a glass, no? but this time they kind of resort to aluminum, like uh, aluminum cans or tin cans also. So, in, uh, in a processing technology, we also have to think about not only the utility in terms of inventory management and also in terms of like, for example, processing technology <coughs> and other things, but we also think in terms of the functions of the packaging, uh, of the functions where the the packaging, the, pack, the final packaging performs, okay? If we want a packaging material that protects, well, we think about something that is aseptic, okay? That, that is also one thing that we need to consider. But if being uh, aseptic is not really the priority, but more of convenience, no? convenience, that's also another thing. Maybe the convenience, those packaging materials that are light and easy to open, okay? That is also one thing. So you think about paper, wax papers, and etc. No, so these are this will influence the kind of packaging that we will use. And what about image conveyance? Okay, image quality, something like that. Uh, for example, like this company, we grow quality. Can you imagine? Del Monte is not selling what? They're not selling pineapple juice, okay? Uh, they are not they are not processing pineapple juice, but they are processing quality. That means to say that is their image. That means to say any product that goes outside, come out of their factory, it's a quality uh, product, and it conveys image of the company. So they have to make sure that their packaging also will speak for that, okay? Their packaging material will speak for that. So these are the considerations. And of course, uh, the kind of uh, information that the packaging material will transmit, no? There are already uh, packaging materials that are uh, very particular about pollution or environmental uh, uh, management, environmental preservation. That means it should not be polluting to the environment. And of course, it is cost saving, no? So, Another thing you have, <coughs> packaging must be used, no? Which packaging must be used in uh, packaging technology, depending on the requirements of the consumers and distribution channels. If the distribution channels, okay lang sa ila, or stand-up pouches, or retortable plastic, or something like that, well, it depends. You, you don't need to, uh, uh, say for example, if you can, if you can uh, uh, meet the requirements of the market by using 
a relatively cheaper kind of packaging material, so be it. That's it. No, you don't need to over, uh, like for example, over. Uh, you 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 promise more than their expectation. As long as you meet their expectation, well, that is that cuts the market already. <coughs> so you have also to think about transportation, storage, and of course government regulation. If the government says no to plastic, of course, that will determine your consideration already which particular packaging material to use because packaging is a very important part of processing. Okay. And then, uh, of course, there are in the manufacturing operation, there is programming and control of materials, production control, you have uh, arrival of raw materials, and of course, uh, distribution of finished product. These are important, no? Now, just like this one, this is an assembly line of certain product. Now, another area of, for consideration in processing is the way you look at not only the final product, but also byproducts. No? Now, if you are not careful and you are not going to manage well the byproducts, it can make your operation. It can make or unmake your operation. The byproducts could sometimes be pollutant or the byproducts could somehow be an irritant to the environment. Okay? So that we, we think about uh, going into the processing operation and discharging byproducts that still has some benefits to the environment or whosoever will be more, you know, will be more uh, like a beneficial. No, will benefit more. Like for example, in in uh, uh, beer manufacturing or beer processing. For example, in uh, in the in the plant there in Cebu. Now they how is beer manufactured or processed? They use malt or uh, uh, see other other forms of grains. No? But basically, they use malt, and then malt will be a fermentation. You know they. They uh, extract uh, the, the juice and also the, the contents of malt. And then after that, they have a huge, what? Almost like a bagasse or bagasso in, in, you know, in, in our dialect. Almost like, we call it spent grain. Spent grain, meaning to say uh, those uh, particles or fibers where you have already extracted the, the, the juices or the the liquid part and what remains is a dried fibrous part of the of that particular plant so what are you going to do with that are you just are you going to burn them it will pollute the environment are you going to uh, uh, what uh, uh, make compost out of them it's going to be expensive and who will buy that so it's 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 a kind of a a, a puzzling question before but there is one very important what very important uh, uh, use to that. They have noticed that in Cebu, <coughs> they have all sorts of uh, maybe farmers, entrepre inter entrepreneurial farmers, where they have feedlot feeding or cattle cattle feeding where it's, it's, it's uh, fed with grass and other porridge using cut and carry system. So, they found out, according to their scientists, that the spent grain of malt after processing beer contains a lot of like porridge uh, useful for feeding the cows. So they sold, they, they sell this uh, spent grain to livestock farmers, and boy, it's really uh, selling like hotcakes also. They don't anymore have a problem of disposing this uh, byproduct. So that is very clever. No? Another, for example, in, in Bukidnon, in Del Monte, they process what? Juice of pineapples. But first, before they are going to process this into juice, they have to peel the whole fruit. The peelings will be a pollutant to the environment if not properly like disposed. Again, they were able to devise a scheme and also a, a practice, a, a, a technology that in fact this uh, pineapple peelings, mga pakpak, mga 
uh, ano pinagbalutan uh, or pa, ano uh, feelings ba sa ano ng <coughs> pineapple the fresh one and the fermented one is still very nutritious to cattle so that's why they also have a ranch around they bring that there and the cattle will happily eat all of them and you can see the cattle very healthy no so th these are <coughs> these are <coughs> what these are strategies in being able to manage <coughs> sorry being able to manage byproducts and that is very wise and that should be the kind of thinking because whenever we process something we all we expect to have byproduct or waste material what are you going to do with that you're not you are you will not receive or you will not get any environmental compliance certificate if you are unable to justify to see how waste are managed no? so just like for example sugarcane manufacturing the bagas no or the uh, the other waste product from i uh, know from uh, sugarcane manufacturing now knowing that we'll go into the philippine fraud processing some system or sector the philippine uh in the in the in, in the in the the philippine uh, development plan there is what we call as agribusiness or agro-processing uh, uh, account now what are what is involved in there now it in it entails or it involves small scale and uh, medium scale and large scale agribusiness processing operation now in the philippines small scale agro processing small scale enterprises accounts for more than 95 percent of food processors philippine food processing industries 95 percent of that are small scale enterprises what are small scale enterprises Maybe we would like to differentiate them or differentiate this kind of category from medium, from micro, and from large. If it is a micro enterprise, the investment there is only involving maximum of 3 million micro financia. And when it is a small enterprise, it, in, it is actually an investment level that is already above 3 million but not more than 15 million small scale enterprise now or processing operation of medium above 15 million but not more than 100 million of large scale then it involves investment of more than 100 million that is the category of various food processing or agribusiness agro-processing enterprise according to level of investment we can also classify them according to uh number of employees okay for micro you have less than 10 pe people in working for small uh, from above 10 people to 99 uh, workers in the in the factory with this medium it is more than 100 but not more than 200 workers but above 200 is already large scale operation okay large scale so these are the categories. When we talk about small enterprise, we mean something there. No? Now, in, in terms of, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, participation or uh, like, like, uh, like breakdown, you have 92% are actually uh, small or, or micro, actually. And then you have small enterprise, 7%, and medium enterprise. No? Some uh, the same thing you have a breakdown for wholesale retail manufacturing in among SMEs. So the, the huge part is wholesale and retailing no? among SMEs. No? There are top five industries in the manufacturing sector. What are these top five? Manufacture of food and food products, manufacture of wearing apparels, you have also manufacture of fabricated metal products manufacture and repair of furnitures and manufacture of other non-metallic mineral products top industries in the manufacturing sector okay what are the problems in the philippine food processing sector okay issues and challenges in the philippine food processing sector 
Very importantly, you have insufficient raw materials. We import a lot of raw materials. Even, even uh, uh, like, uh, say for example, uh, meat canning operation. We process meat, we import all those, uh, I know, even for example, canned pork or canned beef or uh, other things. We import the, the product no, because in, 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 in terms of like, for example, pork, we produce pork, which is not enough for our population, okay? The market is in short supply of pork, even without ASF, okay? We import a lot of uh, pork in, outside the Philippines, but we also manage to regulate the importation. Even beef is basically almost like 90% imported okay, beef. The beef we can see from various uh, supermarkets and even canned food, no? We import them. And then there is also low level of technology, okay? The technology that we have, precisely because we cannot attain economies of scale because of our uh, short supply of the needed, say, for example, inputs. Lack of research and development at factory level. No? So very importantly, there should be R&D support for all for our product processing uh, uh, enterprise. And then you have also competitive market or low access to large market. That's why small or micro enterprise has to congregate into one particular, say, the cluster, produce, meeting the requirements of huge market. Because individually, we cannot compete in the market. Inconsistency in the product of quality, product quality due to poor practices. And again, another what, another thing, uh, complying to like uh, quality audit in terms of uh, process requirement and uh, other requirements. Lack of cooperative efforts among small scale proce uh, processors. Oh, small scale processors are actually uh, disintegrated or atomistic. They're not so organized. We need to organize more our small-scale uh, processors. Okay, there's also another problem of inability to meet food safety regulations and packaging requirement. Okay, for small-scale uh, manufacturing operation, you will be unable to meet requirements for like food safety, like HASA or maybe uh what um, regulations like gmp because complying with gmp good manufacturing practice also involves investment and if you are very tight in your you know financial resources you need the uh, no, you with you need the assistance of the government for example or whoever uh, private sector that all of your all of your operation together with all other small scale operators you pull together and congregate as one, uh, say for example, uh, supplier of that particular product to certain market. In that way, you can attain certain economies of scale. No? So in that sense, you have also have to consider financing as a really very important problem, especially this time there is uh, there is simply a, a shortage of financial resources to propel our badly uh, injured manufacturing small manufacturing operators no because of the effect of the pandemic <coughs> and other things we need a uh, fresh uh, infusion of capital resource to get the engine of like uh, the factory or the engine of the processing operation going so that it will drive now the it will it will drive economic growth in 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 a, in a sense no inadequate management skills that's why for a very uh, like uh, uh, responsive small scale processors we really need to uh, align ourselves with those uh, assistance provided by the government because 
the processing uh, technology and processing uh, the portfolio of assisting uh, processing activities of small scale and large scale processors is is the mandate of DTI and of course DOST. DOST, I mean D, DA is no longer is already out. DA is for primary production, but processing is for DTI and of course DOST. So we really have to be more uh, alert and also be more observant in trying to see and observe uh, what are the things that these agencies are providing to assist the operation of small scale processors so that management skills and the uh, capital resource and other assistance can be mitigated you no know, can be mitigated in order to be able to survive in the market already you know? so that is that is very important so again in the in the agro processing uh, subsystem there are requirements factors to be considered and there are also challenges in uh, really uh, allow, allowing ourselves to be able to be successful as a food processing or a, an agribusiness <coughs> an agro processors in the, in the market no and then we also have uh, clarified to you the when we say processing we mean four levels no we mean four levels that means to say it is not it is not true that <coughs> if you are selling if you are selling fresh fruit or fresh tuber or fresh vegetable you cannot go into processing you can go into processing by just using level one or even level two but if you want to make a chemical transformation maybe you can proceed to uh, processing level three or four but it entails investment okay you invest a lot but you also uh, develop or provide more value adding to your product with more with higher value addition you also get more uh, of course profit is the final end of the whole endeavor so with that note thank you for this particular lecture and i will see you in my uh, model classroom you download this and of course uh, get hold of the material and i will see you in our group chat also thank you